FM Madison, the snake on the lake. And right now, we have Mute Math in the studio with us to do a little interview. Say hi, guys. Hi. What up? Hello. Cool. All right. What up? Um, uh, I think, when's the last time we were here? Four years ago? Five years ago? It was in 09, right? I get, yeah, that sounds right. <coughs> so, I was at that show. It was my freshman year. Oh, yeah? And it was one of the first shows that I started going to as I was a student here. And I remember, you know, lots of, you know, theatrics or whatever going on during the show. Uh, at one point, you, like, threw the bass drum out into the crowd and you stood on the bass drum. Mm. Uh, that Those was really cool. Days. Those were, <laughs> can we expect anything? Those were the days of being well insured. <laughs> right. Uh, anything like that tonight? Uh, you're going to be at the Majestic tonight yep. at 7, doors open. Yes, that's correct. Uh, since that time, we've, we've learned a few lessons about <laughs> what and what not to place on the crowd. Um, <laughs> drums with, with weird metal things coming out of them, it was, it was not very smart. We did it for that time. We, uh, but since then, we've replaced that drum that we put on the crowd. We've made it a nice, cushy air mattress that we've laced with lights. <laughs> um, and we go out on that now. Okay. Um, so the the crowd's better protected, so everyone should feel yes. comforted in that, um, and um, hopefully it'll be more enjoyable. Yeah. No insurance claims. But was there like a specific reason why you wanted to do the the live album to capture that? Or Which live album were you talking about? Oh uh, well, you just released the live in DC album. Oh, this yeah, guy. Live in DC. Yeah. yeah. And I'm curious, you know, like, w did you listen through a bunch of recordings of live shows in DC? Was your favorite, or what no. was the story behind that? Uh, we were just doing the tour at the beginning of the year, and before it was over, we were like, we, we should just document this, because you know, we'll move on, we'll do other things. Mm -hmm. And so we called a few friends to come uh, film it, we recorded it, and uh, we just put a little bit of it out just to say we did that. Cool. That's all. all right. That's why you take a picture, you know? If, if we're talking live performance, um, you guys have played some pretty huge festivals, like Bonnaroo, Lollapalooza, um, like Voodoo Fest in New Orleans, that sort of thing. Um, obviously, you must have played a lot of smaller shows, at, like more intimate venues as well. Do you guys have a preference one way or the other? Because this is something I notice, like most bands seem to prefer one or the other um, for different I, reasons. I prefer the change up. I think it's always good to keep it, it keeps you on your toes. You know, you're always playing, if, if you're always playing big stages, you just kind of get into this, <sighs> autopilot and same thing with with smaller venues you can get comfortable with always being right next to the drummer or you know whatever you're nice and all cozy and, and when you get spread out you start feeling like oh gosh I'm on my own I gotta play better or whatever yeah. Um, but yeah it's always good to to get thrown into a new environment I think it makes you a better band it, it makes what you're doing more exciting um, what uh what would be the ultimate environment I always think of like bands that I would see and they like the ultimate location, like I would love to see Kiss play in a volcano, or it's like something like that. If you guys could like play anywhere, regardless of time or constraints, or regardless of time, regardless of time, yeah. Hmm. I would, I would love to play in an anti-gravitational room. That sounds awesome. <laughs> nice. Take that constraint away. <laughs> the constraint of gravity. Yes, that would be interesting. Yeah, the original Woodstock would have been interesting to play. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? You could try playing underwater or in space. Dude, underwater, that was a... Uh, uh, not so much underwater. I'm definitely okay. afraid of water. Um, oh, I'm definitely afraid of flying, too. I guess we're not going to space either. Are you afraid of showers? I guess we're going to need like... some te <laughs> technology to help. Did you say I'm afraid of showers? I said, like, like afraid of water? Here. <laughs> Do you drink water? I have a water bottle here. Should I get it out of the room? Come on, guys. You know what I mean. <laughs> We're so literal here. We're known for laying down the very tough questions. Yeah. I appreciate that. Didn't know you'd be sweating bullets when you came in here, did you? <laughs> I know. No, I'm completely on guard. We're not going to get anywhere now. <laughs> uh, so I'm curious, like, what have you guys been listening to on tour, you know, when you're driving around? What's playing in the bus? Well, the last record that I've been playing a lot is a record by Here We Go Magic. Uh, it's called A Different Ship, so I've been vibing on that lately. Um, I'm looking forward to the new uh, Tame Impala record. been looking, listening to um, 
some of the new singles and just watched their new video that came out yesterday for Elephant. I think Elephants or Elephant, whatever it is. It's great. Take his sound and writing and voice. That's cool. Uh, do you think we should listen to a song now? Yeah. Why Let's not? play something off of uh, the live album. All right. Uh, we can just play uh, Odd Soul. All right. And we will be right back here on WSUM 91.7 FM. You really sound like the Black Keys in that song. I don't know why. It just is. It's really bluesy, and I mean, are you a fan of the, the Black Keys? I like Black Keys. You like, yeah. and and I feel like that has a. It's. A, do you think that you're you've evolved since you know, the self-titled the the reset EP up until, the most recent album from last year, Odd Soul. Do you think that record sounds, different? I mean, it must, and you know, how do you think you've changed? In terms well, of your when sound. we made this record, it was with a very specific intention. We wanted to make stuff that, that felt like it was stage ready, like it was just stuff that we were ready and looking forward to playing live. Um, and the other thing was we were really wanting to creatively kind of go back to some of our first memories of playing music uh, when, you know, jamming with Dad in the garage, he's showing you your first, you know, Jimi Hendrix tune and, and conjuring up those memories and images and then marrying that to what we do as a band um and so it was just this experiment of um just creating this statement about who we are who we saw ourselves as and just putting it to music what is your first musical memory um well yeah mine is uh, definitely learning peggy sue my buddy holly my <laughs> dad that song. my dad showing me the chords to that my dad was a musician played guitar and sang and yeah that was one of the first things i remember was uh was your dad a musician as well he was yeah he was he uh i guess the first instrument he taught me a few things on was bass it was a bass guitar he was a bass player and a singer is that the same bass? It is. I'm actually, actually using that bass oh, on wow. tour. And we used Whoa. it on this last record quite a bit. So Paul was gracious enough to allow me to take it out on tour. And it's been great. It's like cool to play an instrument that has history. Yeah, that's you know, awesome. Personal history. Yeah. How has your, both of your, so both of your fathers are musicians. How, do you think that uh, the music that your parents listened to, the music that your dads listened to and played has influenced your sound and like what you think music is and what you like yeah, about it? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, definitely. What did they listen to? Um, or what do you remember, like, or hearing, 60s like, when you like, walking around the house? Like, yeah, 60s music. rock. A lot of... Buddy my Holly. dad was a lot of... Uh, well, he's from Texas, so... Texas blues stuff. Um, 60s rock, big into Beatles, Rolling Stones, and then um, Latin music. My, my mom's from Mexico, so I listened to a lot of um, traditional, like, Mexican music. Did you That's spend a lot of time in the South then? Where did, did you grow up in Texas? Uh, yeah, I Mexican grew up in area? South Texas. South Texas? On the border. Yeah. Beautiful land. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> well, we went, we went yeah. to Texas. It was, Where'd you guys go? We went to South, South by Southwest there. this year together. Okay, yeah. Did you I, ever go I'm to like, that growing up? No. We no, played okay. South by Southwest, but... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Austin's definitely the most beautiful part of texas the hill yeah. country i grew up five hours south of there and it's like <laughs> desert so and there's not there's nothing <laughs> the forgotten it's very different lands. yeah it is definitely okay but anyway um yeah so for paul growing up in new orleans is a bit different i bet a bit louder funkier i mean it's kind of the same thing i mean my dad was in the zeppelin and doobie brothers blood sweat and tears steve miller band um, but, you know, I, I was kind of oblivious to most of that until, you know, my first musical obsession was when I first heard uh, Beastie Boys and Tribe Called Quest. It was when I was in high school. And when I heard this music and I heard about this new thing called a sampler, and that's how they were making this yeah. kind of music, that was the first instrument that I bought with my own money. I saved up and got a sampler. <laughs> and the thing I didn't realize, though, about this sampler... Uh, was now I got to go get a bunch of music to sample from. It's just an <laughs> empty box. So that's when I, you know. Do you still have it? Do you still? Dove into my dad's record collection 
And that's when I really began to experience all this music that he loved. And I had it and, and learned about it because you're sampling parts of it, looking for a drum break, mm -hmm. but you're hearing all this classic music that was just, it was, so it was a very mind blowing time as I got this sampler to just try to make a, a Beastie Boy ripoff track. <laughs> and I was learning, I was getting this whole first, musical education. Were you first doing like a, uh, like, uh, rap stuff? Were you first making beats? Yes, and I certainly tried. And Ryan, you certainly I was, tried. I was, I was going to do it, man. I wanted to be the fourth Beastie Boy. Yeah, and then uh, and then you you left your your hip hop pursuits, at least to that regard. To this day, we still use a sampler when we make music. Yeah. it's the same sampler. It's the same sampler. The that same is exact, awesome. Yeah, we insert those cynical. things around the old ASR ten. Yeah. yeah, might be a bit out of warranty by now. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. That is um, super cool. Do you bring no, it to it's, it's become a very important part of creating music. It's essential to us. Yeah. We don't take it on the road. You don't take it, it on the road. It won't last five minutes. <laughs> no. It has to stay in a studio, <laughs> clean studio, and it can't move more than five feet yeah, exactly. or it'll break down. In a, in a locked room at all times. Yeah. 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 It's in a glass case. <laughs> and and um, Paul, when you when you guys started out, like I, the first thing you guys were doing was kind of like a long distance thing between, between you and Darren. Is that mm -hmm. right? Like kind of sending each other stuff back and forth and making kind of collaborative collaborative tracks like that yeah how did you send tapes or something yes we sent tapes we sent cds um whatever we could yeah i remember uh you know when i met darren he was really just a fan of my former band which i was in at the time and you know so he just wanted to send me stuff and things that he was working on and i think he was borrowing a neighbor's computer at the time to just try to put together these electronic type of things but that's what we bonded on you know he he was doing this sample based type of music and you know I, and I always loved that and creating like that so it was really uh, just a fun exercise to just we kept we kept building on each other's ideas or I'd sing on it or you know whatever and he'd take it from and that kind of became the beginning of what would be mute math because the band I was in broke up and he moved what? to New Orleans and we just kind of kept building on those ideas I was gonna say when, like, when did it finally become like, okay, we have to get together and do this? Um, it, it was probably about a year after that. We had a few ideas. You know, I was thinking it was just gonna maybe be a side project, and it's a big you step. Know, he was just graduating at the time, um, trying to figure out what he was gonna do, and so he just decided he was gonna move to New Orleans and we'd give it a go. Cool. Um. Yeah, I, I I wanted to ask this is a small thing, but the name Mute Math, like, where did that come from? Because it came um, from Darren, who's it, a drummer. Okay, and does it have like any significance, really, or does it? It's it's the name of our band. Okay, so you just, you just <laughs> came up with a cool name. Yeah, it really when we when me and Darren first started uh, working together, we were just calling it Math. I mean, it was this sort of electronic experiment we were doing, and we had no ambitions with it. And then it began to evolve into this sort of band thing. We started adding musicians, and um, and at the time he had an email address called Mute Math. Huh. Um, so we just decided to steal it from him. One of the crew guys. We just played the Honda Civic tour uh, recently with Lincoln Park and Incubus, and um, one of the crew guys came up to me and goes, "Hey, Mute Math." That's a character from a sci-fi uh, <laughs> novel, right? Um, what's that? It's that novel by. Uh, I was like. Yeah, that's the best explanation. <laughs> we should just tell people that from now on. Yeah, it's this great obscure that. novel, sci-fi novel. <laughs> it's awesome it. character. His name is Mute Math. Go check yeah. it out. You know, I just realized that your call letters, W S U M. I'm looking at it inverted on your window. Yeah. And it's it reads Masu, Masu. <laughs> wow. That'd be, a, that'd be a great band name. Big Masu. <laughs> what type that's of music? What type of music is that? Did they play? Big Muscle? Yeah. Oh, that's that's Southern Rock. Okay. <laughs> big Muscle. <laughs> Let's go see the Big Muscle show. <laughs> <laughs> They're opening for Skinner. Uh -oh. So on this paper, I have written my hometown, and I would like you to try to pronounce it. Okay. You can take a stab at it. Born and raised in... <laughs> Oconomowoc? Ooh. Okay, okay, okay. Not, I'm going to give him a shot walk. to see what he thinks it is. Okonomowoc. That's the right way to say it. That's the way it is. <laughs> Okonomowoc. That's what I would say. That, I mean, that's pretty, that's, I mean, that you got it. Yeah. It's, okay, I mean, I just say Okonomowoc. 
Alright, now I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna return the field. Oh, oh, yeah, this is <laughs> be, be prepared. Oh, here we go. Dang. This is a battle. Lovely, this is a lovely town. <laughs> Linguistics battle. <laughs> and, um, you should do the lake. No one gets that. Oh, here we go. Nice. Try me. This is a nice town in Louisiana. <laughs> <laughs> Stumped. Ben's in, Ben's in trouble, guys. Chupatulus. <laughs> <laughs> is that is close? It, you, it's Close. not Chupatulas, though. No. <laughs> uh, what? Anyone else? Chupatula? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Put a little Grigri on. Yeah, you know, <laughs> appreciate that. Uh -huh. Try an accent, see if it works. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, I'm, I'm illiterate, so... I can't read this. Chupatulas? The closest. Closer. Yeah, wow. it's Chupatulas. Chupatulas. Yeah. Right. Uh, sometimes good people for... are like... Oknamawak Namawak or something that's not even trying very right. hard. Just creating syllables. I, yeah. I think I just I think, don't even I care after the fifth though. You have one? I think mine one? is gonna be the hardest for anyone to pronounce. So uh let's see. Let's see how this goes. <laughs> oh. Give that a stab. Oh uh. Is that is that London? <laughs> London. Oh I didn't yeah, know that that's where you're from. The leader yeah. of the London. That, that's close. <laughs> that is very close. You should play up the accent more. I should. It's I should great play up for the radio. More. London. 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 London town. Um, Tottenham. <laughs> God no, not Tottenham. <laughs> not Tottenham ever. Uh, so tonight uh, you have. Show seven seven is doors eight p.m. Tickets are still on sale at the Majestic. Uh, Civil Twilight's opening for you. What's it like playing with them? What amazing, they're a great great band. This new new record of theirs, Holy Weather, is amazing, really amazing. Yeah. So you think that uh, every every time I hear those guys play, I just really humbled that they're on this tour with us. It, it is a must see. You got to come see these guys play. Um, so it's a, it's a good show. And then we have a good friend of ours um, who is starting the night off. He's a DJ, quiet entertainer. He's a lot of fun, so it, it's worth coming out early. Yes, get there when the doors open. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, maybe we'll play uh, one more song and then wrap things up after this. Yeah. Is there a, a track that you'd like us to play off of, uh, I guess, probably your Live in D.C. album to prep people for tonight? Yeah, sure. Um, one of my favorites is Tell Your Heart Heads Up. All right. This is Tell Your Heart. Heads up on WSUM 91.7 FM, Madison. How was it hearing you, uh, your recordings? Like when you're like sitting here, is like that, listening to is yourself? Is that kind of strange or are you it's just kind of rocking out by Is it? it? Is it weird? I don't enjoy it. You don't enjoy it? <laughs> I feel like I wouldn't enjoy it. Like I don't like listening to like stuff that I you do. You weren't like, enjoying I, it either? I, yeah. oh, <laughs> I hear you. If it, it was me, I would just hate hearing myself do anything. Well, who it's is it? Like, uh, who's the Pirates of the Caribbean guy? The main actor? Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp. He says he's never seen any of his movies. Yeah. Once. Right. Refuses to listen to it or, or see himself. Whoops. Come on, man. <laughs> That's the drummer he's calling in. Saying, come Fair on, enough. man, have some pride. Hello? Phone them in. <laughs> that's what I, this is my call, I just got. Your free boarding passes for an all-inclusive cruise to Nassau, Bahamas in exchange for your answers. Are you sure you want to be I'm giving everybody this information? Right now. I, I got one of those calls, we too. A, are we, we going to be on the same cruise? Oh, right. <laughs> Because I'm really excited for this cruise. Now if we all call there, in, we can all be on the cruise. shirts and stuff, it's going to be great. Let me get over my fear of water. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, like, I mean, if you're proud, Justin, if you're proud what? of, like, music that you've made, I can imagine, like, I don't know, it might be cool to hear it recorded. I mean, maybe you wouldn't listen to it the same way you would yeah. listen to another band, but I don't know. Like, I, don't know, I feel like I hate it. I imagine... <laughs> Kanye West <laughs> listens to a lot of Kanye West. <laughs> Absolutely. Like that's that's what I, I think. Do you guys record every every show that you do? No. No? Okay. Because I know some, a lot of people some, do, do, some that do that now. Mm -mm. We recorded quite a few on that particular tour. But, yeah, if... If we did that and tried to go listen back to all, oh man, that'd be torture. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, so we usually just pick a show. This is the one we're going to actually try to listen back to and right. do for real. So when you put together the live album, so that's just from one city, right? Yeah. yeah okay. Because some bands, uh, they 
kind of cut and paste from like one song from one night and one song from another and sometimes they're more upfront about that and sometimes they just kind of blend it together and don't really tell you that it's you know you're listening to 13 different performances which is what you did with the armistice album right no that was one show that was one show too okay i feel like there's a lot of value in having just one show because you know then it's kind of i don't know it's more truly live I it guess. feels more organic i guess yeah. the flow of the songs together yeah, maybe. Maybe. I think so. I don't know. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> Why not? We'll, we'll go with that. I went to ask the, the classic cliche band question. Mm. Uh, what advice would you give to, you know, bands getting their start and trying to, to make it in the, in the current, with the current state of the music industry? Uh, what would you, would you have any recommendations or any advice? Yes, we would. <laughs> right, Roy? <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't Finish happen? school. Oh, okay. Huh? We're getting older now. That's not how we answer that question. <laughs> yeah, I should have asked you. We have kids now. Back when you were throwing yeah. bass drums in the crowd. Yeah. That was the time to ask you. Finish school, get insurance. <laughs> Think like an old guy. Um, well, I'm just curious. If you had to ask us the anti-cliche band question, <laughs> the one question that that little voice inside said, no, don't do it. You're going to piss them off. But it's what everyone wants to know. <laughs> What's that? Hmm. What do you think? I mean, I wanted to embarrass you with pronouncing my city. Oh, man. That was mine. That's pretty pathetic. That's not a question, like, though. You're just trying what? to Come on. belittle us here. Uh, on, all right. Just, just, your just home. Justin, what do you No have? one asks us. <laughs> <laughs> just something... We're well, your guests, man. Come ridiculous. on. Ridiculous. Hmm. Do we need to phone it in? I don't know. We, should we get a call? Shut up. We could try... <laughs> We got three guys here, three three minds that can come minds. up with the college guys, question. right? You guys go to school yeah. here? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I I heard that there was some. It doesn't have to be music. Say on the radio. What is the best drug you've ever done? Whoa. There we go. The best drug I've ever done. Best drug you've ever done. Okay. Shrooms. And why? That was a long time ago. We're not judging. Huh? We're not judging. Yeah. Sure. I would say shrooms. Right. What made it so great? They're shrooms, man. Yeah, man. Shrooms. <laughs> no, it was a, you know, cool experience. And I didn't wake up with back problems like you do when you take acid. <laughs> All right. <that's> <laughs> when I Which I don't do anymore. I haven't done it in a long time, so. Right. But yeah, you know. See, when I woke up with those back problems, I thought it was just because I'd been lying on the floor all night. <laughs> <laughs> Probably had something to do with it. Side effect. I wasn't aware of that, so. Um. Well, then, if you crack your back, right? I, I can't. Ew. I have to have someone, like, stand on my back to crack it. I can't do it myself. I've heard of experiences where the day after you can crack your back and then it'll, like, start up again. Really? Yeah. What? It releases. Yeah, it releases because it, 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 it that sticks are in your spine. And you crack your back, it goes back. Yeah. Interesting. Hmm? Yeah? Well, I haven't ha I've cracked my back. I think I, don't, I, haven't, I haven't had any back problems. So, maybe that's, I'm good. That's good. Don't do it. Those detoxing sessions I've had <laughs> have helped. <laughs> Those master cleanses I do on, cleanses. you know, <laughs> monthly basis. Like the bottle of, what is it, like some it's some crazy liquid and you just, like you mix it up and it's got like pepper in it and, yeah. it's, and honey and stuff and you just drink that for like 72 hours and apparently that yeah. flushes your system or something. I One of my teachers in high school did that and we all thought he was crazy and it turned out he was a little bit crazy. <laughs> Um, do you guys manage your own Twitter page? Yes. Do people ever tweet you scandalous photos of themselves? No. You've never had a... Do you ever tweet people scandalous that. photos of yourselves? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to change that. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So everyone, uh, at Mute Math, is that, what's your handle? I think that's it. Just at Mute Math? Yeah. It would be kind of sad we if we someone else had that. Yeah, dick, like dick pics, <laughs> call them in. <laughs> just now, Appreciate now for that. the rest of your tour, you're just beginning. That's what you asked Thanks, for. Man. You told us for the anti, right? the anti cliche. Well, what we want? dick pics. Apparently, that's the anti cliche. Dick pics and dick pics, right? <laughs> Those are the two, the two categories. Well, we are going to wrap it up now. These guys have to go sound check over at the Majestic. But just a reminder: doors at seven. Show starts at 8, Civil Twilight and Mute Math tonight. You don't want to miss it. Thanks, Thanks everyone for tuned in. Thank you, Roy. Oh, I have a question for you. Okay. Last question. Right. What do you call someone from this hometown? 
There, there isn't something cool for it. Really? An Elkanamawakanese? <laughs> you don't know, do you? <laughs> Elkanamawakian. Elkanamawakian. That's what I would have said. Elkanamawakian. A Milwaukian. Mili Wake. Mili So, Roy, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you tonight. Don't do drugs. Ever. Ever. Unless they're shrooms.